What are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? Mm. Mm. Let's do the same thing I do every week and I work on the E92. So today I want to kind of sort out the rear end of my car behind the firewall um, because I have the rear quarter panels on order and they should be coming in in the next couple weeks. So I want to sort out everything right behind the rear firewall so when they come in I can jump right into making the tube rear for the car. The fuel cell cradle is actually already done. So I'm going to mount some brackets for the fuel filler neck and the uh, vent tube. Um, also kind of just get everything in there and sorted so it's right after it gets painted. Um, and what I got done during the week because uh, I did get a little bit done but honestly not that much. But uh, we'll work mostly on the fuel system today. All right, guys, check out what we got going on in here this week. You can see I was playing with my dimple die, or not my dimple die, my bead roller, and bead rolled some designs into the panels that I welded in here. And uh, this area right here is actually the separation for the oil tank. So the AccuSump or the dry sump oil tank will go in there, depending on which one I get. And it'll be completely sealed from the rest of the car, and obviously outside the car because you have to via the rule books if there's any leaks or anything like that. Really what I want to get done today is the whole fuel system. So obviously the fuel cradle's done, the floor's done, but uh, I gotta mount some miscellaneous brackets and stuff to get the radium fuel cell uh, ready to actually run inside the car. Earlier this week, Night Owl was nice enough to cut me out this sick fuel uh, filler neck holder. Um, we just designed it on CAD and then cut it out on his plasma table. That's gonna go kind of like right here-ish, right below the rear window. So you might be wondering why it's going here when I specifically told you guys that it was gonna go here just a couple weeks ago. So I found out this location right here is illegal. You can't put it here, so don't copy me. Don't put it there. Um, you're modifying the unibody structure. It's kind of vaguely worded in the rule book, but don't put it there. Kevin Wells said no, confirmed, don't put it there. I wanted to put it here because first of all it's really low so it's very easy to hold a gas tank up with a regular fill nozzle and hold it until it's empty and fill the fuel tank but you know the inherent um, deficit of putting it there is it's on the other side of the car so there's only one access point you have to be on the passenger side of the car to fill the fuel so I was like okay where can I put it that has you know other benefits but other deficits as well and I decided that right in the center here somewhere around here like here underneath the rear window will first of all allow me to fill it from both sides of the car you know forward and back the problem with it being here is you'd have to hold a uh, five gallon fuel jug here the entire time it's filling so that wasn't gonna work for me I'm too lazy to hold up a jug that long um, so I really didn't want to put it like in the center of the car for that reason I mean those jugs are heavy I found out later that actually you can buy these nipples for the jugs that kind of open when you push the jug down into the fuel fill neck. That means that I just have to hoist it up there, set it down, it opens as I set it down on the fuel filler neck and just kind of balance it there. So I can fill it from either side of the car and uh, it's, I don't have to really hold it up if I change all the nozzles on my fuel jugs. So that's what we're going with. All right, so I think this hole is dead center. I mean, I really hope it is. I'm gonna use it to, instead of like measuring anything, it looks dead center. I mean, everything's evenly spaced. I'm gonna, I think this hole and this hole is dead center. Plus these two are spaced equally apart from here. So I'm gonna use this hole as dead center. I'm gonna take this guy. I'm gonna squeeze it right between these two squares. Right there. I'm gonna mark. This is gonna be the grind line. So this is where I have to grind the paint off so I can weld this. 
and that's basically where it's gonna go. All right, let's go ahead and get this ground off here. Ah, there we go, all done. Now you guys might be saying, but Blake, weren't you bitching and moaning and complaining about how you wanted to keep the rear windscreen and not put your gas filler cap in the window? And that's true, I was. I did not want to put my gas cap in the window, but this is kind of a necessary thing um, because I can't drill into this, the C pillar and I don't want to put it in the quarter windows because if you look at the quarter windows, this is the air inlet or one of the air inlets for my radiator. So I don't want to block it with a big cap. And that's what everybody does, I want to be different. Putting it here, you know, a lot of people do the half windscreen, but uh, I don't want to do that again. I did that on my E36 and I don't want to do it again. Um, and that would be fine to mount the filler neck here and have the half windscreen, that'd be fine. But if you have a full windscreen, it goes on top of the filler neck. How do you get to the filler neck if you have a windshield covering it? The intention is to put the gas cap here, then put a tube on top, like a five inch tube. The tube will come up vertically through the windscreen and be cut flush with the, whatever angle the windscreen's at. So that way I can fill it and get the nozzle of my jug all the way into the tube and start filling the tank while also having a windscreen and a very minimal five inch hole in the center of the bottom of it. So it is kind of a compromise, but at least I'll still have a full rear windscreen and be able to keep the profile of the back window of the car instead of changing it. Still not quite where I want to be, but I'll tell you, by the end of this project, I'll at least be a better welder than I was. That just slid right in there. I mean, that's that's nice quality. The radium kit is just so nice. I mean, everything's just such high quality and uh, it's just like a pleasure to put together because everything fits the way it should, which is really something that's lacking in, in the industry, honestly, because half the stuff I buy doesn't fit. But man, this stuff fits nice. Man, I spent a lot of time wrapping this stuff though, geez. So this is the, the attachment for the filler neck. This is the remote fill kit. But it's got a super nice like swivel fitting on it. Not just like a normal AN or anything, that's nice. You can turn it, bolt it down. Okay, maybe I'll bolt the plate down. And then bolt the neck on top of it. Really nice. Man, so the sides of this thing are knurled so you can finger tight it on. And then they give you this beautiful monster wrench to tighten the top down once it's in the position it's gonna be in. But I'm gonna keep it a little loose for now so I can change it a little if I need to. It's gonna go like this somehow. Gotta figure out how though. All right, where do you guys think I should put this thing? It's the vent for the fuel tank. And uh, really, I think it should be like up here somewhere. Maybe I'll weld a little, little holder up here something all right so i got this little bracket whipped up for the filter uh, the filter will sit let's put it there the filter is kind of going to sit on top like this and this bracket will get welded to the car so it looks something like that and i'm going to put it like right there so it's really high up from the gas tank basically the highest point in the car on a nice looking little bracket. I mean, you can't even really see the dimple die I put in it, but it's there. And I'll uh, weld it here and do that. 
Let me show you what I came up here with for the radium fuel cell installation. So this is kind of how I ended up routing it. I have my fill, fill right in the center here. It's not actually that far. I think I think it's okay to like put the jug in all the way from like you know the top down. I got pretty good reach, no problem. And uh, but yeah, that's right there. Very very sturdy. You know, shakes the whole car actually. I don't know why this panel is so stiff and and rigid, but it was no problem to weld this on here. And I thought it was kind of going to be a little flimsy, but no problem. And we got it coming down here, right into the fuel tank. This is the, the fill. I just cut this uh, hose a little shorter and it does go maybe a quarter inch lower than the actual fill point right here but I think it's okay. If it's not okay I'll just shorten it up a little bit more. I just wanted to ease the bend there. And then the vent. So I got the vent up in this corner. Looks pretty sweet even from outside the car. I mean way up in the corner on its little bracket that I spent so much time making that you can't even see. And uh, the vent hose comes down here and this is the port for the vent right here but uh i don't have the right fitting for it so i gotta call radium and get the right fitting for it and then i mean all that's left you just wire up the fuel pumps it's wicked easy i have two fuel pumps in here and a surge tank so i have the lift pump here and the two walbro 450s so total three walbro 450s in here you just wire them up this is in actually sorry that's out this is in and everything is contained in here and then this little cover right here that's just for the fuel level sensor so i can put a fuel level sensor in here later but really nice kit really nice setup from radium and uh, i think the install went pretty well i'm going to try to tuck this this line like kind of against the firewall like that a little more but i think it's pretty clean install and it'll work pretty well so guys if you like this type of content please subscribe tell your friends to subscribe like this video and uh i'll be back next week